How y'all brothers doing? Yeah, good. What's your name? AJ. AJ. My name is Simakaya. What's your name? Angel. Angel. All right. My name is Simakaya. What's What's it? What do you believe in the Bible? Yes, sir. I do. Yeah. What What do you What is What is your knowledge of the Bible? What does the Bible teach? Bible. It tells the story of, um, you know, how man sinned. Uh huh. Downfall of man, and God redeemed the world through Jesus Christ. What's the world? Let's get John three sixteen. The world is uh, all of humanity. All of humanity. Yeah. Now the Bible says that. Yeah, that's what the world means. The world's everyone in the world. Dude, that's what the Bible say. That God, that Christ came and saved the whole world. Everybody in the world. Okay, let me show you something. Let's read that. Give me. Yeah, let's read that first. Matthew 15 and 24. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So this is Christ speaking. He said he's not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, what did he mean by that? Who is the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Assuming the Jews, right? It's the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. The Jews, according to the Bible. So he said he he said he's not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And now we because I want to deal with what you said because you said the world. So I want to deal with the scripture that talks about the world. Let's get John three and sixteen. John chapter three verse sixteen. Bring it out. For God so loved the world. So it says, for God so loved the world. Whose God is this? It says, for God. What God is it talking about? The God of the Hebrews. The God of the Hebrews. That's right. God of the Bible. So you, you answered that right. So the God of the Hebrews. Let's read that one more time. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world. So it says, God so loved. He loved the world. So if, if this is the God of the Hebrews, and the, the word loved is past tense, who is he talking about? He says he's loved the world. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the whole world. You can't exclude. No, no. We talking about the Bible. What did what did what did the Bible say? Yeah, that's talking about the whole population. But what did the Bible say? It says, "For God so loved the the world." So in so when Moses was walking the earth, God loved the whole world. Yeah, he did. According to what scripture? John 3, okay, we're gonna break down. We're gonna we're gonna dissect John 3 and 16. Give me Luke 1 and 68. Because it says, For God so loved the world. That loved is past tense. So he it means that he loved somebody before that was written. It's referring to that. Read what you got. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Put some emphasis on that. He said he visited and redeemed who? His people. Uh -huh. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Uh -huh. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So read 68 again. Read it from the top. Verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Read. For he oh, have visited and redeemed his people. For he has revisited and redeemed his people. So the God, God, you already answered it. When, when, when John 3, 16 say, for God so loved the world, this is the God of Israel that's talking. And this right here says he redeemed his people. His people are the Israelites. That's right. The Jews. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans as we know them today, which are you, which y'all are. Why are Hispanics Hebrews? We're not Hebrews. How not? How are we? How are you? Who is this right here on the sand? Bring it up. Do you know history? Do you, do you know these things? You see this baby being slammed up against the wall? Against this tree? You see this cross being forced on, what was his name, Montezuma? You see this cross being forced in his name, in his eyes? Who, was the, who, who came over here in 1492? People are not Hebrews. Who came over here in 1492? Who was here? Columbus. And who was here? Who was here? Who was here when Columbus came over here? The Native Americans. And who else? Because this is a very large landmass. You have North America, Central America, and South America. Who populated these lands? They right here. The Puerto Ricans, the Cubans, the Dominicans, Guatemalans. 
the Native Americans, the Seminole Indians, the Colombians, the Mexicans. That's right. And Argentina and Chile. We were over here. It was already people here. And you know that's documented in the Bible too? That's how we how those people came over here. Do you know that? So how are we Hebrews then? How is a Mexican I'm I'm Mexican. How are you a Hebrew? I'm gonna show you. Give me that um give me that in black Indians. Give me that in black Indians. Because you, do, you, do you agree? The Mexicans was already here on, in Central America. Right, right. The Mexican Native Americans. Though. So who came over? Who came to Mexico and overtook Mexico? And Spanish, the white people. Okay. Right. And what happened? What else happened? What, what's some other things that happened during that time? They came over here and took your land. Right. And what else did they do? They killed y'all off. They killed y'all off. Yeah. We got mixed in too. And y'all got mixed in. Yeah. Yeah, so who were y'all so, so, so who were y'all before and it's dark skinned Mexicans. Yeah, right. So who were y'all before they came over? Did was y'all speaking Spanish? No, sir. We were speaking all There was a lot of languages. There was a lot. So we're gonna show you this. I want you to listen to this. Read. Start at the top. This is the black Indians a hidden heritage. Uh page twenty seven. For the people of the Americas, the arrival of Columbus was hardly a blessing. On his first day, October 12, 1492, the explorer wrote in his diary, I took some of the natives by force. Now this is a account of Columbus. It was Hernan Cortez that, over, that overtook Mexico. Hernan Cortez is the one that is the Spanish conquistador, which means conqueror, that came over here and overtook Mexico. But this is the same account, because this is the same thing that happened on all these different land masses over here on the Americas, read. He later found the original inhabitants to be tractable, peaceable, and concluded. There is not in the world a better nation. And this speaks of qualities that you, the so-called Mexican still holds today. You are very peaceable people. Just like we are very peaceable. But you're, you're not peaceable when you're put in the wrong situation. But overall, you're a peaceable people. This is, this is an account of us. Read. His response as a European was to say that the Indians must be made to work and adopt our ways. The Christopher Columbus, whose unique seamanship and courage had opened the Americas to European penetration, also began the transatlantic slave trade. Wait, you ever heard that before? The transatlantic slave trade? Where have you heard that before? History class. But who did it pertain to? Who did they who did they say was involved in the transatlantic slave trade? Yeah, I remember it. those European countries mostly. No, but who who were who was who were the people that were being shipped in the oh. transatlantic slave trade? Yeah, Native Americans and Mexican people. Right? That's and who right. else? Black people, Africans. When did we start being because this says this was the start of the transatlantic slave trade. Yeah. So read. He started by shipping ten chained Arawak. Arawak men and women to Seville, Spain in 1498. He wrote enthusiastically to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella about the business possibilities. So it says this began the transatlantic slave trade. This is in 1492. It began as transatlantic slave trade. So the Atlantic, you know, is the Atlantic Ocean. How did they get across the Atlantic Ocean? How did they send them to Spain? On boats, right? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 68, because I want because you asked a very good question. I'm still going back to John, the John 3:16, but I want to deal with this because you said, "How are Mexicans the Israelites?" That's right. So we just read right out of there that he said that it began a transatlantic slave trade. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Read 15 first, because I don't think that y'all was up here when I read 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Do you know who wrote Mo the book of um, Deuteronomy? So Moses, this is Moses writing, right? So read that again. It says, notice he said, it shall come to pass. It's talking about something in the future that's going to happen to who? The Israelites. Because we know Moses is writing to the Israelites. Read. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So it says if, if the children of Israel would not keep God's commandments, what's going to happen to them? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. 
So he said curses was going to come upon the Israelites if they did not keep God's commandments. That's and right. it's no secret. You familiar with the Bible? Did the Israelites keep God's commandments? They broke him. Right. Right? So jump to 43, uh, 46. It was sign and a wonder. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So this is talking, but still talking about them curses. So it says they, the curses, going to be upon the children of Israel for a sign and a wonder. What's the purpose of a sign? Make these known to people. It's an identifying marker. So like right now, we know we own 26 in Christiana because of the sign. So you can identify a place, you can identify a people by the signs. And the signs are the curses from what we're reading. This is what the Bible is saying. Yeah, I'm going to need that. Dump to 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says, and the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. Remember, we're talking about the Israelites. What were the Israelites doing in Egypt? They were in slavery. They were in slavery. So notice the, the Bible says, read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. He says, and the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. Did we ever go back in the land of Egypt? Did the Israelites go back in the land of Egypt? It's not in history. So what is he talking about? And you just, you just said we was, in, we was in slavery. The Israelites were in slavery when they were in Egypt. So Egypt is referring to bondage. So read it again from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. Now how did the, how did, how, wait, read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So what happened? How did the, what did they do when they came over here? They sent y'all to Spain on slave ships. That's right. What is that? Why did that happen? Bible prophecy. It wasn't a coincidence that they, it wasn't just, they just came over here. Cause yeah, you can look at, you can look at history. The so-called white man conquered the whole, they conquered pretty much everybody. But the way that they did it to us is specifically documented in the Bible. That's right. By ships. Give me that black Indians again, just so we can read it again. He said, he gonna send us, he gonna send the Israelites into slavery again with ships. Read that again in, uh, on page 27. The Christopher Columbus. The Christopher Columbus whose unique seamanship and courage had opened the Americas to European penetration also began the transatlantic slave trade. He started by shipping 10 chain Eric, men and women to Seville, Spain. So we know they was in the Americas and he shipped them to Seville, Spain. Chained. Chained. We're going to deal with that chain part too. He said they, he sent them chained to Seville, Spain by ships. And he didn't send them over there just so they could be a showcase. He sent them over there to be in slavery. And that's what, the, that's what we just read out of the Bible. Read. In 1498, he wrote enthusiastically to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella about the business possibilities. From here in the name of the Blessed Trinity, we can send all the slaves that can be sold. So I want to deal with that because it says, he said, in the name of the Blessed Trinity. What is the Trinity? So if he came, if Columbus came in the name of the Blessed, the so-called Blessed Trinity, why are we following after that same religion Bring today? Teach. Bring it out. When he, they enslaved, they, they conquered your land, enslaved your people and sent them, but yet we following their religion. You think they're going to teach us the right way? Teach out. When they conquered us, they're not going to teach us the right things. They're going to teach us everything possible to keep us on the wrong route, Bring it the out. wrong way. Teach. So the, the, for one, the Trinity, there's no Trinity. Teach. That's, that, that's, not, that's not according to the Bible. But we're going we're gonna to stay here right now. Read. From here, in the name of the Blessed Trinity, we can send all the slaves that can be sold. It says we can send all the slaves that can be sold. This is saying a lot. And all, everything that this is saying, we can read it out of the Bible. That's right. And the curses. Read. When he loaded 1,100 Taino men and women aboard... For, Spain, for Spanish ships, the crowding and the stormy Atlantic crossing took a fearful toll. Only 300 survived. 
But Columbus in Spain had decided to continue the profitable slave trade from the Americas. Seville became the slave capital of Spain. So they were, so we see clearly that when they were sent over to, over to Spain on those ships, they were sent into slavery. And it says, now get your, go back to Deuteronomy 28, let's finish 68, and then we're going to go to 48. Because you said, how are the Mexicans, Israel, the Israelites? Because these, all of these atrocities, all these things that happened to you all, to us, is Bible prophecy. That's right. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So he brought you into slavery again with ships. That's those, uh, uh, the 10 hour white men being sent over to, to Seville, Spain. The 1,100 Taino Indians that were sent to uh, the other part of, part of Spain. Right. But only 300 of them survived. And this is, they were, it was named the slave capital. Right. So they were sent on slave ships to Spain, which is Bible prophecy. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning that we would not know that we are the Israelites. We would not know that Jerusalem is our homeland. Israel is our homeland. We are displaced out of, from our heritage right now. Read. Right. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. It says you shall there, when you get off those slave ships, you're going to be sold to your enemies. For what? For bondmen and bondwomen. For slave men and slave women. That's how we, we just, this is history. We didn't write these books. These are historical books that let us know that history, history is hidden often, hidden in books. And the Bible, the Bible is all we need. But we read the books just to show the correlation of what happened to us and that it's in the Bible. Read verse 48. Because remember, it said 10 chained Arawak Indians. Read. Verse 48. Therefore shall thy serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So remember, we're reading the curses. Because remember, the Most High God said that if we don't keep his commandments, he's going to send curses. So right. now he's saying the, the end that Read it again. Therefore shall thy serve thine enemies. He said we're going to serve our enemies. All, out of all of the businesses, there's a lot of businesses over here. That's, there's a lot of businesses, but who are we paying, who are we paying taxes to? The government. Who, who's over the government? President. And who's the, who, I'm, who is the president? You don't want to say it. The Bible going to say it. It says, read it again. Therefore, shall thy serve thine enemies. So it says, you're going to serve your enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. In hunger. When we want to get our food to eat, we got to go to our enemy to get it. Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. Water to drink. Water comes in your house. Water comes out of the ground free, but we got to pay for it. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. The clothes that's on our backs. We don't own the textile companies that put the, put the clothes together. We got to go to our enemies to get it. Read. And in want of all things. And one of all things. If we want to get married, we got to go to the courthouse, which our enemy owns, and get the paperwork, get a marriage license. When our children are born, we get a birth certificate from our enemies. We get a social security number from our enemies. Everything that we want in this land, we got to get through our enemies. Even if you think you got your own, when you dig deep, you paying taxes to your enemy. Your enemy, you paying for the land that you own. When this land ain't even theirs, but they selling it to you. Teach, huh? Read, and we gonna get that too. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. What's a yoke of iron? It's like they put on the oxes to make them work. Yoke of iron. A chain is made out of what? Iron. A yoke of iron, read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So the reason it says he put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. Why is nobody walking around with yokes of iron on their necks today? Because we are destroyed. We don't know that we are, we no longer know that we are the Israelites. Right. We no longer know. We call, we walking around, call ourselves black, Mexican, Hispanic. We call our name all, we call ourselves all of these by words. Bring it out. We call ourselves everything but the Israelites, who we are. Right. And then when, when somebody, when somebody try to tell us that we are the Israelites, we're like, nah, nah, we ain't Israelites. Nah, that ain't, that ain't true. But that's your history. Teach. That's, this is our history. That's right. Because the people that's in the land now, tell, tell me when they, they, they went into slavery on slave ships. 
Tell me when they had jokes of iron on their neck. They didn't because they're not the people. They're imposters. Yes, That's according to the Bible. Give me Lamentations 5 and 1. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. There's no doubt about it. We fit the curses. Right. Everything that the Bible says about the Israelites, you look at us and you look at our communities, and it's a split image of it. Everything that we do reflects the Bible. to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.